Yo, what is up people? All right, so today we're gonna to be changing out the brake pads on my 2005 Dodge Dakota. Um, this is a generic video. It's gonna work for pretty much all of your, <clears throat> all of your vehicles um, that I could possibly think of. So <clears throat> you should be able to use this um, on most other vehicles. <clears throat> Unless changing brake pads has become more of a science um, than what it was in 2005 when this thing was made. Oh, so you're going to need, obviously, some new brake pads. Um, I got the nice ones. These were like after tax. They were $50. Um, I think they, the, the computer said they were like $48 or something like that things you're going to need sockets to fit your lug nuts um something to break those lug nuts loose with i like to use my torque wrench if you've just got your um standard lug wrench that came with your vehicle that's fine <clears throat> got a fancy torque wrench you probably do need a torque wrench for this job um i need to get my smaller one hold on because there is a piece that requires a very light amount of force. During this job. And it probably wouldn't hurt to have a strap or something to hold the brake caliper up with. So, get up here. Something like this. You can just fix it up there with while you're working. And so, I'm going to jack up my vehicle and take my wheel off and I will be right back with you guys. my brand new tires I got put on not but like a couple weeks ago all right get these out of the way okay so first things first <clears throat> which I've done in uh, I think it was a video on how to replace um, the rotors and then I also <clears throat> did a video on how to replace the wheel hubs. First thing you got to do is take a flat head. <clears throat> and this is with this is with most cars. I'm not 100% sure if everything's the same. There's there's a space in between. Uh, I wish I had my flashlight. Hold on. Let me get my flashlight. All right. So I got a thing. I'm gonna try to do this with like holding a flashlight and uh, alright, let's see if you guys can even see it in there. There's a space between the rotor and the brake pad and you can see it more easily when you shine a light onto it <clears throat> and you wiggle your rotor around. But you want to stick your flathead screwdriver in between the brake pad and the rotor if you can or find somewhere where the piston is exposed the brake caliper piston is exposed and you want to uh, you want to kind of push that back by using the flathead screwdriver as you guys will see in a minute <clears throat> so 
so. But you're not really gonna be able to get a, a good close up on me while I do this, unfortunately. Since the other side's up, it's gonna make this a little bit more difficult. So at this point, at this point, after it's cutting kind of loose, not like super loose, but loose enough that I can do a little something with it. These are, I don't know what kind of things these are. These are just regular bolt-like things. All right. I have my strap ready. My strap ready. And I'm trying to figure out what size bolt these things are. I'm gonna guess a 12. A 12? Hmm. Nope, not a 12. Well, it should be a 13. Yep. Sure is. It's a fucking 13. These aren't in there with a lot of pressure, so it should be pretty easy to get out. I think it's like 100. Um. 128, I think I said, quoted in one of my videos, it's 128 inch pounds for these, which is like, only like, it's less than 12 foot pounds. You don't need a lot of torque on these, so, so that you guys can get a better uh, view, because I know not everybody's an expert and understands what I'm doing right now. Um, <clears throat> Let me see if we get my screen to pop up. Come on. All right. So these uh, bolts right here are holding this caliper into the bracket. Um, they're like they're called retaining pins, um, and they do not require a lot of torque. So when you put them back in, be very careful not to strip these out. I'm just taking these out right now. So this will allow me to take the brake caliper off of the um, rotor itself, which is why you want to have a uh, strap or something handy because that'll allow you to hang the caliper without causing any problems because you don't want to hang it from the brake line. Um, that should go without saying, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it's best to assume, it's best to assume that everybody watching this video has never done this before. So. So always have a strap handy when you're getting ready to take this thing off and it's also worth noting that whenever you are changing your brake pads you really want to make sure to get that that piston recessed as far as far as possible because when you put your new pads on it's gonna be they're gonna be thicker so if you didn't get that thing recessed all the way in there real good then there's gonna be, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for you to get your new shit on or get the caliper on with the new stuff on. Uh, just double checking this.
trying to make sure that trying to make sure that it's actually recessed in there as far as it can go Pretty loose, which is good. Um, just want to give it a little bit more, just to make sure. So, but if I don't, then I'm gonna regret it later. <laughs> you should just be able to take these out by hand now. A little, but believe it or not, these little two little um, called pins, technically called retaining pins, are holding your entire brake caliper onto your uh, onto the bracket. So they are very important. Okay, so. This bottom one probably needs to be pushed in a little bit more. Yeah. So. It's hard to tell. If it's if it's in enough, so you want to put this up there, and then you're gonna to want to run your um, your strap through the caliper, and then through something on the other side that you know will help to keep it down. So these were starting to squeak. I don't know if it was this one. Oop, there goes a clip. <laughs> I don't know if it was this one that was starting to squeak or if it was the other one. But my guess is that it was the other one. But I don't know. I think there was still a lot of looks like there's still a lot of brake pad left on it, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Alright, well I'm going to show you guys how to put the <clears throat> put the new ones on, um, of course. And, um, and then we'll go from there. I'm going to get a clamp out here just in case uh, this piston is not pushed in far enough. Whenever I put the, go to put the, uh, go to put it back on and everything. Um, so I will be right back. So either this is the kind of clamp that I got, um, or channel locks probably work just fine too. So what you can do is kind of open them, open them wide and then, you know, we'll see if they're wide enough. No, they're not even really wide enough. <clears throat> But if you need to use a clamp, you can open this really wide and then just until it pushes down on it far enough. So we'll address that if we need to. When the time comes. Uh, so these are the little clampies that go on the ends of the brake pads. So as you can see, these are 
um, quite a bit thicker than the old ones. <laughs> like, just, just a little bit. Just a little bit thicker. Not, not a whole lot. Um, so this is going to be... As far as getting on the uh, caliper, I might need to do that trick. Uh, I don't think these are directional. So I don't think it matters which one goes where. Some vehicles have directional brake pads, guys. All right, so. Um, if they have a certain direction, they usually um, indicate that very, very, uh, they make that indication very well known on the brake pad itself. But mine, mine appear to be non, non-directional. So, um... Yeah, I don't think they're I don't think they have a direction, so <sighs> the clips are pretty much the same as well. The clips go on with the little thingies facing away. So the clips go on like this or like this or something. Like that, maybe. Yeah. yeah, like that. Just put your clips on, on the ends. Put your clips on the ends, kind of like this. Like this. And then the pads here. Clips are facing like this. And then you just slide it in the grooves mine is different from other vehicles not every vehicle is just going to be like a slide it into the groove type deal um so uh, let's see if i can even get this shit in there they are very new so you might have to work with them a little bit before they really get well seated. So we use gloves to protect our fingers. Okay, <laughs> those are those are pretty uh, pretty tight in there. That's for sure. All right. So you just do the same thing to the other side. These are gonna break way better than my last set of worn out brake pads. My brake pads haven't been changed in like 44,000 miles. So it's probably, it was, you know, it's about time for a change. <laughs> My last set was the same, same brand Duralast. I don't think they were Duralast gold brake pads. I didn't even know they had Duralast gold brake pads until I went to AutoZone the other day. I thought they just carried regular Duralast. These clips, if these clips don't come apart, why does this always happen? Why? Fucking clips get inter intertwined into. Okay, just throwing it down. I'm just gonna figure that out later. Just grab another set of clips and go about my day. Um. All right. Same. Same kind of thing. Like that. And like that. And then this, let's see if I can let you guys see better. This, there's a groove down there where this slides into, like that. And then another groove up here where this slides into. And just work it in there. And once everything's kind of seated and, and then happy, it'll sit there nicely. And they kind of, I mean, that's the only, the, the caliper pushing in on these things is really the only thing that kind of um, causes braking. So they kind of, they kind of float because I used to have a, a Chevy Cavalier and the pad on the inside would actually clip into the caliper 
and the cat that would hold it. The other side would be similar, but two that just kind of sit into the brackets. It's kind of interesting to me because it's different. But all right, so now we're gonna try to put this caliper back on, um, which make it interesting because this shit's way thicker than. I didn't realize how worn down my brake pads were until I put these new ones on. My pads were worn out. Set it up here, both hands on it, and I kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. That's why I brought this out here. And this will help to recess the piston and uh, you guys probably can't see too well because I gotta have both hands in the way to oh there you go oh, that's better you can kind of see that the piston is recessing back into its into its hole essentially and now we will do the other side Just take a fair amount of force to do this. <sighs> That's just enough. Just enough to get it on there. Should be just enough to get it on there. Might need a hammer when you do this too, but I'm gonna try to do it without a hammer. Hopefully. Ah, oh, shit. Push the, uh, it'd help if I push the retaining pins in. There. Good thing my finger didn't get caught in there. Whew. That wouldn't be bad. All right. She's back on. I didn't even have to break out the hammer. Hopefully. Get this. Putting our pins back in. Bolts, pins, whatever the hell you want to call it. There we go. So you just want to initially get them down like snug. What the hell? Think. Turn to the fucking left. Initially, just get them snug. Shell. Use the torque wrench. All right, so I'm gonna torque um, 
I'm gonna torque these, these, this bolt and this bolt down to like 100 and not past 130 inch pounds. Cause that's what I remember. That's what I remember it was last time I did this job. So uh, you guys probably aren't gonna be able to see much. Cause I'm gonna be laying on the ground. So I'll give her another round of just, I'm just checking on it. After you hit it with the torque wrench, just kind of, just kind of check on it. Make sure that everything is good, good and snug, good and snug. All right, I'm not gonna go anywhere at this point. All you guys, all you guys have to do. Uh, fucking light is in my face. <sighs> all right. At this point, all you guys have to do is put your wheel back on, and um, when you get back in your vehicle, just pump your brakes several times before you take it out of park, so that it kind of builds that pressure back up in the piston, and um, and then you can start driving around. Um, when you put your tire back on, obviously, uh, know how much pressure your uh, wheel lugs need in order for them to be safe. So uh, tighten all your wheel lugs down to the appropriate amount of pressure for me. It's gonna be um, 100 foot-pounds for each lug nut. And uh, that's the job. So all the things you really need, you really need a strap. Um, all the things you need are kind of here. I would definitely recommend channel lock pliers. You're gonna need a couple torque wrenches just to make sure everything gets right. Um, the DeWalt is kind of extra. You're gonna need a jack, but you can just use the jack that comes in your vehicle. Um, and that's pretty much it. And obviously any set of brake pads. Um, but thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos. So please like, subscribe, comment if you guys have any questions. So, thanks.